Matthew Bryza is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. He joins us now from here in Istanbul. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Matthew, it's interesting that this meeting is taking place now. What led to the two sides meeting for the first time since 2012? Well, I think Yusuf was addressing the, the general trend that has changed in over the past year, really, whereby it's the departure of President Donald Trump that has allowed and required a new set of geopolitical forces to begin to take shape uh, in the Gulf uh, and, and throughout the eastern Mediterranean. Uh, what do I mean by that? You'll recall that when President Trump came into office, his first trip was to Saudi Arabia. Uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, the Saudi Arabians, together with the UAE, uh, Egypt as well, uh, announced the blockade against Qatar, and that led to the crisis in the Gulf for for the you know four years. Um, with the departure of Donald Trump, we started to see some shifts, shifts that Yusuf was just talking about. For example, there were meetings between intelligence officers in both Turkey and Egypt. Um, started to be an improvement in relations, uh, or, or at least an, uh, talk about opening relations with the UAE, uh, and, and also even with Saudi Arabia, and even Minister Cavusoglu had a meeting. So um, since the departure of President Trump, there's been a general uh, trend of Turkey wanting to uh, restore relations with the countries of the Gulf, uh, and then those countries themselves seeing that the Trump policy of, let's say, full pressure or maximum pressure on Iran was going away. One last point is we've seen on the UAE's side for the last uh, year or so that it has de-escalated in Yemen. Mm. Uh, and it, it has been you know, contrary to what Saudi Arabia wanted to do to keep the war going. UAE wanted to get out. And UAE has also taken a different approach to oil production, right. wanting more oil production rather than Saudi Arabia's approach of keeping it limited. So both sides, I think, have been preparing for a year or so mm -hmm. to get ready to have a meeting like this. So you think that they will agree more on issues regarding foreign policy uh, following this meeting between the two leaders? I hope so. Well, certainly there won't be an ideological obstacle. I mean, yeah, as we know, and as you've been talking about, uh, UAE and Turkey have been on opposite sides in Libya. But if that political process moves forward, elections are supposed to be held on December 24th in Libya, if that process goes forward, then Turkey and UAE will have a shared interest in, in keeping the new Libya together. When it comes to Syria, I think that the UAE and Turkey have a shared interest uh, in opposing what Iran has been doing in Idlib. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of coverage in the media, but um, Iran has been just as active uh, as Russia has been, together with the Assad regime, uh, essentially in terrorizing the civilian population in Idlib. And obviously, Turkey is the last great protector of those civilians in Idlib. So, yeah, I think with the ideological obstacle removed, meaning that UAE and Turkey were supposed to be on opposite sides of that Gulf dispute, yeah, I do think we're going to see more cooperation on foreign policy now. Um, trade will also be a big talking point uh, during the meeting today. I mean, Turkey is an ideal place to invest at the moment. What kind of deals um, do you think we can see them make on that front? Uh, well, maybe in port management with DP World already uh, operating one port in Turkey. Uh, it's a world-renowned company uh, that operates ports all over the world. So I think we could see some 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 action there. Um, uh, in, in the medical area, you know, I mean, th th there's a lot of commonality with both both countries. In fact, uh, our leaders in uh, medical advances, medical tourism, and I think there are some synergies there. Uh, and in the tech sector, you know, both countries have different types of tech sectors tech sector prowess, uh, and I think there, there are commonalities and common benefits that can be accrued through, through greater trade in the, in the tech sector, including fintech, where Turkey is quite strong. Common interests here. Let's talk about their common interests. Uh, what do these two countries need to agree on to make sure that they have a sustainable, positive relationship moving forward? Well, I think one area is in Syria where uh, both countries share a desire to restrain Iran and its militias, which have been pounding, frankly, the civilian population of Idlib, where Turkey is the protector. You know, as we recall, there was an agreement between Russia and Turkey to protect the civilian population in Idlib, and, and Russia has violated it repeatedly and is now uh, attacking those civilians together with the Assad forces. So UAE doesn't want to see any expansion of Iran in, in Syria, and Turkey sure doesn't want to see the attacks on the civilians in Idlib. Uh, in Libya, I think the equation has changed quite a bit, whereas previously UAE and Turkey were on opposite sides, uh, with UAE supporting al-Haftar and Turkey uh, supporting the, uh, the government of national accord, the UN-recognized government. But now with elections coming up, 
hopefully on December 24th, if they're maybe they're delayed a little bit, then both countries are going to have a, a shared interest in seeing Libya be put back together and that whatever uh, government is elected will survive and become stable and then be able to pursue some shared interest both countries have, especially in constraining terrorism uh, in, their, in the area. Finally, I think UAE and Turkey both share an interest in seeing the tensions in the eastern Mediterranean decrease. If we go back a year ago in August, the UAE was definitely taking the side of Greece, along with France, against Turkey. And you'll recall that there are some incidents where, well, in one case, a, a Turkish naval vessel collided with a Greek naval vessel. After that, President Erdogan de-escalated. And he kept Turkey's oil and gas exploration ships in port and out of the eastern Mediterranean. And so I think that shows that Turkey wants to de-escalate in the eastern Mediterranean, as does the UAE. So those are three areas where they can work together. Right. Uh, our uh, editor-at-large, Yusuf Adam, earlier said that there's competition fatigue between the two countries. Would you agree? Absolutely. There, there has been all throughout. There, there's, look, they have different views about politics in terms of, of political Islam. I mean, the UAE has been a staunch opponent of the Muslim Brotherhood, and Turkey has not <laughs> been a staunch opponent. Um, so, you know, that's competition in the political ideological space. Um, but economically, I think there's, you know, all countries compete, but there's there are huge opportunities for the two countries to cooperate on trade, as we were talking about before in the case of ports, for example. I mean, DP World, a UAE-based company, uh, is managing a port in Turkey and would like to do more business. And we just saw the, the economic ministers of Turkey and UAE meet the other day, right. and they're, they're, they both said there are lots of new things we can do together economically. So sure, there's always competition. But both countries have made a strategic choice for a paradigm shift, as Ali was saying, to find ways to work together, even as they compete.